What is going on YouTube? I hope all of you guys are having a great day. So today is a really interesting day because today I am going to be showing you my entire stock portfolio. Now guys, I will be really honest, I almost didn't make this video because, well, the truth is I try to be humble with everything I do. And my intention here is not to come off as super salesy. I, I don't wanna come off as if I'm flexing, right? I don't want it to make it seem like I know everything about everything with stocks. And the truth is I have had many past investments that have failed, but I've learned from these investments. And like I said in a past video, I try to never make the same mistake twice. And I also understand that there are many other YouTube channels out there with respect to investing that don't reveal their portfolios. And some even look down upon those channels that do. And I completely understand where they are coming from. I want my content to be as transparent and genuine as possible. Or in other words, I don't want to create content and preach about topics that I wouldn't actually do for myself. So the last thing that I need to say before I show you these screenshots of my portfolio is that yes, you will see the stocks that I own and you will see what my gains and what my losses are. Again, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. However, I am not going to show you how many shares of each stock I have and I'm not going to show you how much cash I have on hand because personally, I think my individual wealth is completely irrelevant to the purposes of this video. Now guys, I own six companies right now. Five of them are in the US and one is in Japan. So I actually had to set up two different brokerage accounts, a Fidelity account and an interactive brokers account. We're gonna go through the Fidelity one first and all my US companies. And then we're gonna go into my interactive brokers account and look at the Japanese stock. Last thing, real quick, none of this is financial advice guys. And in fact, I would encourage you not to purchase any of the stocks in these portfolios just because there isn't really a margin of safety in a lot of these opportunities anymore. I'm very grateful that these stocks have appreciated, but I would not encourage you to purchase any of these stocks based off of this video. So I'm going to put up the Fidelity screenshot right now, and you're going to see that the first investment that shows up right there at the top is Alibaba Group. And this is actually one of my most recent investments. Now, I've been following Alibaba Group for a while, and I actually made an entire video dedicated to my bullish thesis around the stock and what I think it's worth. So if you want to check that video out, go ahead and click the... Uh, little button up there, forget what they're called, a card, go click the card and check it out. But I'm really interested in this stock because Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's right hand man, just made a fairly sizable investment in the company and I decided to shamelessly clone him. Guys, I think Alibaba stock is probably worth about 300 to $350. And I actually have had a couple viewers comment on my Alibaba video saying that they think I am lowballing the stock. They think it's worth more. One viewer I think said that he thinks it's worth 450 to $500 and he might be right. However, what I read in the 10K and based off of the opinion that I have generated for myself, I can't get there. However, I think we can all agree that considering Alibaba is trading at around, I think, 225 right now at the time of this recording. The stock is undervalued. Now, guys, I am going to show you all of my other investments, but I do have to uh, put this into the video. Guys, I hate begging for likes. I really don't enjoy doing it. However, I do want to grow my community. And one of the ways that YouTube allows me to do that is by getting likes on these videos. So if you guys could please help me out and help me grow this passionate community with me, I would really appreciate it if you could just hit that thumbs up button right below this video. Now, guys, my second investment in this account is Seritage Growth properties. I began buying Seritage I think around last July when I found out that Monish Pabrai had made a sizable investment in the company. Right now I think Seritage is trading around $15, $16, 17 somewhere in that range. Guys, I don't check my portfolio that often, like once a week maybe. But I do know that Seritage is probably worth about $35, maybe $40 at least, at least based off of their assets that they own right now. I can make an entire video on this if you guys want. However, I really do think that there are other channels like Brad Kellner's channel, The Stock Compounder channel that have already created a ton of great videos that cover Seritage and I think you guys should probably check those videos out if you're interested in this opportunity. I will put a couple links to those videos in the description. Feel free to go check them out. I think they are great videos and very informative. Now the third investment in my portfolio here is Meritage Homes which if you've been watching the past few videos I can't stop talking about it. Uh, it is really one of my favorite companies that I own right now. This was a typical case where I was going through my screener and I found a stock that was in my circle of confidence, had great fundamentals, a great balance sheet, and was selling at a steep discount and I just couldn't help myself after reading the 10K. Now I started buying Meritage around $85 a share and with each paycheck, I added more to my position and I think my cost basis is around $88, $90 per share. Right now the stock is at 115, so I've already made a 25% gain in a very short amount of time and I didn't expect 
expect that to happen. I never do. I always buy a stock with a three to 10 year time horizon. And in some cases, I wanna hold on to the stock forever. However, I do think Meritage Homes is worth at least $170. And if they continue to have a good year this year and next year, it could be worth as much as 200 to $250. So guys, the next investment in this account is Bank OZK. And I found out about Bank OZK, I think last August, when I found out that one of the guru investors that I follow, Phil Town, bought the bank. And I'll be really honest guys, although I'm really happy that I have made some great gains in this company, with hindsight, I probably shouldn't have invested in it because I really don't understand banks as well as I should if I'm going to make a sizable investment in a company like a bank. However, what I do know about valuing banks is that if a bank or a financial services company is selling well below its book value, then the odds are if it has good fundamentals, then it will pan out pretty well for you. So when I bought Bank OZK, it had a book value at the time of like so essentially you can think about that like buying a dollar for 40 cents. So like I said, guys, yes, I am really happy that I made these gains. And to tell you the truth, it really was just all luck. And it was just me shamelessly cloning Phil Town. Banks are definitely outside my circle of confidence. And I don't see myself investing in any other financial services companies in the near term, just because when I read the 10K, I just simply do not understand them that well. So the last investment in this account is humbly one of my best performance ideas ever and I'm actually pretty proud of it so this stock is called G3 apparel and it popped up on my radar my stock screener which I've actually talked about my stock screener and how I find undervalued stocks in a previous video I'll leave another card if you guys want to go check that one out and how I find my ideas for stocks highly recommend that video I think it's pretty valuable a little biased but this this stock actually popped up on that same exact screener that I talked about in that video last March when the crash happened this is a company that does a lot of e-commerce and retail apparel and so obviously with what happened last year the stock took a big hit because uh, consumer spending was definitely going to be going down for the rest of the year. Now guys, I have said many times that I used to work in e-commerce and digital marketing. I really do understand this industry very well. And this was one of the first companies that when I read the 10K for the first time, it was a very, very easy read. So I decided right away that it was in my circle of confidence. And I realized that despite the fact the market was having a very negative outlook on this company, there were gonna be good times in the future and that this company would survive the storm and come back. Now, I started buying G3 apparel around 10 or $11 a share. And surprisingly, it has already roared back to the low 30s. Now, I really do want to say this is definitely an investment that I don't recommend purchasing anymore. And that is simply because one, it is appreciated greatly and the margin of safety has completely diminished. It is selling at its fair value. I don't know how much more upside there is for this company. And secondly, the company is going through a big restructuring and they took on a lot of debt. And I'm not gonna lie, it has kind of changed my opinion on the company a bit. And I have sold a bit of my position in this stock just because I think the fundamentals of the company have changed. Now, you might be wondering, well, if the fundamentals have changed, why haven't you sold out of your position entirely? And that's a great question. And I actually might end up doing that within the months ahead. However, one, I don't wanna pay uh, short-term capital gains tax. And also I already have fairly high cash levels above 30% and I really don't want to go any higher than that so for now I'm just gonna hold tight to my position that I have right now but now I want to put up my interactive brokers account screenshot and you might notice that there is some Baba stock in there and the only reason I bought Baba stock in that account and not just entirely in my fidelity account is because interactive brokers is extremely slow to transfer money I mean like a little over a week in some cases. And Alibaba stock was selling at, at like 225 a share. And I didn't wanna take the risk of waiting for a week for the money to go into my Fidelity account. So I decided to purchase a small amount of Baba stock in this brokerage account as well. However, the bulk of this account is in Shinikin stock, which I actually just made an entire video talking about that stock. I released it, well, if I'm scheduling my videos correctly about two days ago. I have no idea when I'm going to post these videos, I'll be very honest. However, Shinikin stock is one of my my favorite companies that I own simply because one, I greatly understand it. And two, one of my favorite guru investors, Monish Pabrai, probably the next Warren Buffett, made an investment in this company as well. Now I talked about what I think Shinikin is worth in my previous video, but in case you're wondering, I do think Shinikin is probably worth at least $23, $25 a share roughly. Right now it's selling at $11 a share. So there's definitely uh, at least a double in the near term with this stock. However, this is a stock that I plan on owning for a long time 
because if you watch my video on this stock, I talk about how management is really good at compounding your money that you invest into the company. In other words, they take your invested capital and they invest it in other projects that are gonna continue to be very profitable. They have a proven business model, which makes a lot of sense to me. I completely understand it. And I do think they can continue to duplicate this model in various emerging markets. But guys, that is honestly all I own. It's just six companies. And I'm being completely honest, this is my entire portfolio. I genuinely believe that diversification is not good. I think diversification is an excuse for ignorance, for not knowing the companies that you invest in that well. If you're truly confident about a company, why wouldn't you allocate a bigger portion of your wealth into that company? Or as Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett would like to say, it's more like diversification, which I completely agree with. I understand very few companies, uh, but the ones that I do in, I make relatively large bets on them. With that said, guys, let me know what you thought of this video. Again, I was really hesitant to make this video. I don't want to come off as salesy or as if I know everything about everything because I don't. Like I said, I want to be humble with all of my content. If you have any constructive criticism, please leave a comment. I would love to hear what you think about these types of videos. But with that said, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know there are a lot of things you could be doing with your day, and I greatly appreciate the time you spent watching this. So you guys are awesome, and I will see you all in the next video.